Uh, you can get livestock, what they call livestock guardian dogs, who are actually trained uh, for predator control and to protect the birds. We don't, we don't have them on our farm, but um, if you do have a dog, it's helpful to a certain extent. How do you prevent Have I seen a rooster protect the chickens? Absolutely. Absolutely. They're generally, a good rooster will be the first to die. He'll give his life for his girls, no question about it. How do you free range the chickens in the winter time? How do I free range the chickens in the winter time? With great difficulty because we're up on the hill in Floresville. You may, you may, if you listen to weather reports in the winter time, they'll say um, increased precipitation at higher elevations. Yeah. That's us. <laughs> we'll have uh, many, feet, many feet of snow. Um, what we do is we bring all of our coops are hauled in, our coops are on skids that we haul around the pastures with our tractor. In the wintertime, they're all pulled into two areas, and we kind of have them kind of like a little wagon train so that um, in an area, we actually shovel the snow around the coops so that they can go outdoors. And um, because that's as an organic farm, we have to provide outdoor access to our animals year-round. We open the doors. They can choose whether they want to come out that day. Some do, some don't. Kind of like brown dogs in February 2nd. Yeah. 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 So the question was, what would be the minimum amount of work and uh, materials, equipment and materials needed uh, to have like a small backyard flock, right? Okay, so you would need something to house your animals in. And if you only had three chickens, if, if, if you provided five square feet of space, you could probably get away with something pretty small. Yeah. Um, you would need something like a coop. You would need a feeder, a waterer. In the wintertime, you need something to keep the water from freezing. You'd need bedding material. I'll tell you, chickens are not uh, a small flock of chickens, not like what we've got, but a small flock of chickens for your backyard. It's not a real labor-intensive prospect. You need to feed them and water them. You need to ensure they're safe. So if you let them outside to roam around in the yard, somebody's got to come lock them up at night so that the raccoons don't get them or the owls or whatever. Do they need to be like in a fenced area too? It can be. Can be. If your neighbors like them, they'll go over there and eat their stuff too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They'll always go back to their area. Yes. Once they bond into their coop, they will always come home to roost. We've had that problem before and move the coop. Yeah. The next coop is closest to where the coop was. We'll go to that because yeah. it's where they have a they have an amazing uh, G, internal GPS system. We'll move the bird's coop and that night they'll be standing on the spot where their where their coop was in the the day before. They know where home is. And they will return there daily and we have to go kind of herd them. Your coops can move ten feet away, yeah. <laughs> but it, it is it is really amazing to me that they have this very solid internal GPS system. Yeah. What trouble about coyotes on that way? I interestingly we don't have we not had, but we have not had coyote problems. We have had problems with owls. We've had problems with raccoons. We've had problems with hawks. Fox. Fox. Oh, oh yes. The mink. The mink that those of you who follow our Facebook page or our or our on our email list know we had a big problem this winter with mink. We have in the past had a mink that came through every every year the third week in November. He would come through, he might take one chicken and then he'd move on migrating to it what I believe was his winter breeding grounds. This year he didn't show up till the middle of December and he decided to stay. Moved, in, moved into the barn and um, was just picking them off. So it was it was a painful it was a painful time for 
for us. We lost quite a few birds. We lost all the ducks we had at that time. He seemed to be particularly out of one day. Out of one day. Yeah, they're very destructive. I lost my entire flock to a mink, so I have a I have a personal uh, grievance against a mink. Yes. Um, just, uh, just wondering. I've been told that in Fredonia the ordinance, or the village of Fredonia, the ordinance is you can have up to two chickens, but I don't know if anyone can be aware of that. I am not aware of that. I don't know. I, I think you would need to check with the Fredonia zoning board because, to my knowledge, Fredonia does not allow chickens. I know Jamestown has changed its ordinance. Um, Buffalo has changed its ordinance. Amherst has changed its ordinance. A number of communities have changed theirs. I have a customer who's actively working in Faulkner to change theirs. Uh, some communities are more amenable to having that discussion than others. But I say go for it. Ask. If there is no one, you can be a white person. Yes, talk to the landlord first. I, I know a number of people in Fredonia who would love to have chickens. There's actually a city in Europe, Denmark, was it? That are requiring households to have chickens. They provide them. Because they're in Denmark, I believe. Because they reduce household waste so much, uh -huh. there's that much less going to the landfill, and people are getting fresh eggs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you think about all the excess, you know, the food left over on your plate at the end of a meal, or you know, people feed them their food waste, it can go a long way. They love apples. Apple yeah. peels are small. Oh, boy. Like crack cocaine for chickens. So <laughs> yes. During World War II, we had chickens because when my mother called the police department and said, "Can I have them?" Because there was no meat. And uh, the police chief was very nice. He said, uh, "Yes, you can, Mrs. Thompson." Well, I won't have any roosters. He said, "You better." <laughs> <laughs> now, do they still keep them warm with light bulbs? That's what they did. We during. don't. We don't heat our coops. Um, <coughs> the chickens provide the heat. We also use a um, what's called a deep litter method. Um, in our coops, you um, you keep piling on shavings and stirring up the bedding. And it creates it creates a heat on its own, their own heat. Like and the birds the birds all snuggle up tight together in the wintertime and keep each other warm. The only thing we provide them in the wintertime is a um, a heated um, pan to keep the water from freezing in the in the waters. Things have changed. Now, 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 the light bulb, uh, we do provide lights in the wintertime so that our birds continue to lay. Because if we don't put them on lights, they all stop laying. About August, they decide it's time for vacation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they need, a, bird, bird needs, a hen needs about 12 to 14 hours of daylight in order to produce an egg. So once, once those light levels get below 14 hours a day, they start slowing down and they'll come to a complete stop. Um, so, uh, Most most breeds will. We had um, we had one coop last fall when there was a lot of rain and uh, we couldn't get our coops pulled in because the fields were all muddy. And so we had one coop that was way out there and we couldn't get extension cords out there to get lights and so those girls just they shut down the first of October and they didn't start laying again until February. Oh, so, really? Yeah, yeah. So that's preservation. You know, for them it is. It gives their systems an opportunity to rest. Um, and, and some of that, you know, is the theory is that that's healthy for the chicken to do. Certainly. Whoever sell your ducks? Yes. We sell ducks, we sell goslings, we sell turkeys, we sell chickens. <coughs> We sell older layers, 